Boom, man, we're live. Welcome, everyone, to the first ever Mostly Football Fantasy Mock Draft. And we got a special one for you. We have tonight with us Rapid Dave and Alan from the Strikeout Beer Podcast. If you watched Dress Casual, my separate podcast before, you're definitely familiar with these guys. We had a heck of a time uh, the, t- the times that we've been on before. But I believe this is the first time we've ever had them on Mostly Football. Unfortunately, no Nate tonight. He canceled. Uh, last minute thing came up, but he's with us in spirit. I We truly believe he is dodging Allen. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. Without he's a doubt. But other than that, uh, Rapid Dave, if you wouldn't mind, I know we want to jump right into this mock. we got a few stories to talk, but if you wouldn't mind giving us just a quick overview of what Strike Up Beer is all about and what the, the new things you have guys, you guys have going on, because I know there's a bunch of separate shows now that you've broken it down into, so maybe just uh, dive into that real quick before we get started. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, I'm RD. I'm co-host of Strikeout Beer, uh, also uh, SB Fantasy Football Podcast and SB Baseball Podcast. Those are two spinoffs that came from our show. Uh, it's Strikeout Beer is a weekly, if not a Monday and Wednesday, but it's always a live show with Alan and myself, two two buddies that you know we hooked up, what, 15 years ago, dude? And yeah. we pretty much never left each other's side. And it, it it turned into a fantasy football and beer podcast, but then now it's our live shows are so much of a variety. That now we just have beers interact with the crowds and uh, and just have some fun. So we, there's no topic off the table for us. Yes, I'm sorry to look away real quick, but I want to make sure to share this to my personal page. We're all good there. Um, Alan, do you believe everything RD says, and do you think that he truly loves you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say I believe everything he says. But I, I will believe that he loves me. Yes, that that is a, uh, I can confirm that. So guys, what's awesome about tonight is we actually have a serious advantage when it comes to every mock draft that has been done up to this point. We know now for sure that the Hall of Fame potential for sure locked in wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins will be joining the Tennessee Titans this year on a two year, twenty six million dollar deal. Um, this according to NFL.com, the one we're reading right here, guys. I just want to know. Obviously, people, the way that you know things finished with the Titans last year, I'm pretty sure Jacksonville Jaguars are the favorite to win the division this year. It was kind of ugly. You, they sprinkled in Malik Willis here and there when Tannehill, you know, got hurt, and now they go ahead and draft Will Levis. So there's kind of this like three-headed, who knows what the hell is going on with uh, Tennessee quarterback thing. But obviously, DeAndre coming in really sours the fantasy hopes of Traylon Burkins, number one, or Burks, nah, not Burks, <laughs> Traylon <laughs> Burks, number one. But uh, number two, do you think that Ryan Tannehill at this stage in his career is the kind of quarterback that can support wide receiver one numbers for DeAndre Hopkins, who was really good in a limited, um, and I know he got hurt last year and he was suspended, but was really good in the games he played last year with the Cardinals. You want to take this, Alan? So I, I fully believe he can support one wide receiver. Yeah, and that's going to be Hopkins, you know. Okay. Unfortunately for for Burks, if if you've got him in like a a dynasty league or something like that, it, it's not looking good. Now, kind of keep him on the back burner because are we going to get a full season out of of D Hop? I I don't know. You know, he battled some injuries and stuff. You know, the last several years, so we'll see what we get from him. But it's it's a it's a one receiver type show out there in Tennessee. Uh, if Tannehill's in there, if if Malik's in there, I I don't know, I I don't know. After I, someone's got to catch the ball, right? We've got Lee Knox coming in here saying that uh, DeAndre is going for a 200 yard season. I'm pretty close to that. Yeah, I feel I feel that's more my uh, my. I, I listen, DeAndre Hopkins is, Hopkins is a is an amazing player, but he's almost now. He went to the like one of the only teams that where I am not excited. Yeah, he's, he's almost like an avoid. Unless really? I get some superior value, which I know I won't. There's no way yeah. I can't touch him. I can't cut, touch him at his current ADP uh, whenever that is released, and I won't touch him. So you don't necessarily think that he's lost it. You don't necessarily think that Tannehill's a bad quarterback. You don't. You just don't trust the scheme for a wide receiver. To oh, he's finish. lost it. Yeah, he's oh. lost. Uh, isn't he like forty at this point? I mean, he might be thirty. I call it forty. Thirty's forty. Whatever, but. Yeah, no, he's not Antonio Brown Hopkins. He's not that bonkers. But <laughs> yeah. no, I think one, like Alan said, it, it's one of those things where can he stay healthy? He's got a subpar. He's got a serviceable quarterback. 
Right. And you've already seen that he can support like A.J. Brown, right? But A.J. Brown, he got elevated when he got himself a really good quarterback. Yeah. So right. you got three you got three really good receivers there, but only one of them is going to come out being the superstar. But that could be a week-by-week -week basis. So I now, can't. Speaking of the Titans, where are you guys – I mean, I guess we're going to see in this mock draft coming up, but, I mean, if we might as well discuss it real quick. Do you think that this is the year finally – Derrick Henry falls off a cliff. Um, I'm letting my friends good. draft him. I'm letting other people draft him. I, d I don't it, it, with the sheer volume that he had last year, close to 400 touches with receiving and rushing. The the, the history doesn't lie when it comes to the people having that type of volume and that type of production. Sure, they drop off. He's currently the first pick in the second round. That's his current ADP. If you can get Derrick Henry in the second round, that means he's your he's your second pick. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, I think I'm okay with that. I, as your backup or your second running back, if you go running back, running back, or yep. if he would be your first uh, running back. So you get Jefferson, you then you get like you know, or Jamar Chase, and then you get Henry. You get you know, that's fine. But yeah, I mean, second round running backs. Who's out there? What's going to be? But we'll see where everything falls tonight as a mock, that is. But, yeah, no, I, falling off a cliff, he's too damn big of a boy for that. He will have injuries. He, he always misses a couple games. It is what it is. Um, I'm actually scrolling quite a bit to find him. He's number 17 on this ranking that you have on Sleeper. I meant to ask, is this a PPR? This is going to be a half point. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's right in between. I mean, you don't. You don't value guys that only score touchdowns too much. You don't value guys that only catch the ball too much. It gives you a nice in-between of where you value guys. Yeah. I think. Sleeper, Sleeper has them at 17.7 right now, ADP. So you're talking mid-second round. Yeah, no, that value, I am I think I'm in at that point on him because I'm, I'm getting him at that at that rate. Now, you do have Josh Jacobs that's a couple spots below him. You got Amon St. Brown, the sun god, that's uh, one spot behind him. You know, you look around and see what you could get in that area. I mean, you're talking Pat Mahomes, number 15 on this list. So are you cracking open the 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 quarterback right. genie bottle at that point? And I, if you are, I mean, good on you. I mean, he's a superstar. So. And what's, what's interesting about him too is I believe last season was the most passes he's ever caught in his career thus far, and he's the type of running back who you know you could get a plodding guy like Zeke who might give you like sixty yards, but also fall into the end zone twice. Henry's the kind of guy who wins you a week. He gets 200 yards and runs for two touchdowns. So he, he can really blow up. And to get that guy in the second round as your first running back, nobody should be sad about that. And he did that a couple times last year. You know, he exactly. just blew up, I think, week 15, if I'm not, or maybe it was 13 or 14 or something. He just went bonkers. I can't remember what week it was, but I remember looking at the thing and going, God, and just freaking out that if you were playing him, it sucked. If you had him, you were a legend. So. <laughs> Well, just as Boston Scott is guaranteed to score a touchdown against the Giants for the Eagles, Derrick Henry is guaranteed to destroy the Jacksonville Jaguars. So whenever he faces them, you can almost put it in the bank. Yeah. Two, two games right there that you must play. Yeah, there you go. We also have another uh, interesting one here. This is mostly football. I know we weren't going to cover this type of thing too much. This is our fancy mock draft. But huge news in the sporting world. LeBron he, just lost he just lost him. He's gone. He's out. Way to LeBron go. LeBron James, everyone has um, proven to be the true narcissist that he is, and he has decided that he's going to grace us with his presence for another year on the basketball court. You're getting at least two because he's going to play one year with Bronny. If I could just read this quote, um, I don't care how many more points I can score or what I can or can't do on the floor, James said. Quote, the real question for me is can I play without cheating this game? The day I can't play without giving everything on the floor is the day I'll be done. Lucky for you guys, that day is not today. He cheats all the time. Like they're instituting a flopping rule because of him. <laughs> not necessarily just because of him. There's a Wait, lot of mainly, He There's started a, all this bull crap. Basketball's the new soccer. Because of him. <laughs> all this stuff happened while he was in there. <laughs> well, he coming in saying he's taking his talents to Trash Beach. Ugh. He is changing his number. I saw back from six to twenty-three. Yeah. Wow, that under who gives a shit. <laughs> so we just wanted to cover that real quick, and also another thing that happened at the SBs the other night. I wanted to cover real quick before we get into the uh, mock draft here. Uh, an emotional Demar Hamlin introduces the Bills training staff at the SBs and presented them with the Pat Tillman Award. 
Oh, <laughs> for saving his life on the field last season. MVPs. That's probably like the only award that went to that was like a, a valuable award at the ESPYS. And uh, the training team. staff was honored for their life-saving treatment on the Bills' safety last season, where he we he I got to get that edit there. Huh. Suffered cardiac arrest. The group received the Pat Tillman Service Award, and Hamlin was the one that introduced them to the stage. Why does that say we he? Because yeah, people don't pay attention anymore. There's nobody proofreading these things. <laughs> <laughs> I got like four people pro- proofreading a report I send out, and like this, <laughs> they don't care. They're just shooting it from the hip, baby. The spell check says they're both spelled right. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> We're good to go on this one, boys. <laughs> yeah, obviously the the Pat Tillman Award is an interesting one. I mean, a guy who went to go serve his country because he felt compelled after the 9-11 attacks and obviously a lot of controversy around the 9-11 attacks and the um, incentive to go do that, along with the fact that Pat Tillman was killed by friendly fire. So that in itself is kind of a whole thing. And then you've got the fact that, you know, safety DeMar Hamlin had this really weird incident where he had a cardiac arrest on the field. Everyone was... Real quick to call it uh, commotio corditis, this condition that only doctors have heard of. It's a very rare thing that never happens on the football field. It only happened in the NFL once in the 60s, I think, back when guys were smoking cigarettes and drinking beer before they came out on the field. And even that only happened once. But, you know, it just so happens in this in these times where some new things may have entered the medical field and guys are doing this and that. And all, of course, we're only allowed to talk about one thing. No one's only ever allowed to talk about the other thing. So. Let's just move it on. This is Commotio Corditis Awareness Month. And even though it's a super rare thing that never, ever happens, it definitely happened to Demar Hamlin. And we're moving on now. Didn't it happen to Chris Pronger as well? If I'm not mistaken, the same thing that happened to him back in the NHL playoffs. Well, he's talking more about NFL. That's all he's I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was happened. terrifying to watch it live. Yeah, you, you named a guy. It definitely happens so often. You named a guy. Oh, my God. I don't know if I, if I could hang out here much longer. We're going to get killed right. <laughs> Without further ado. On a point, everything is rare until it happens that's, that's very true and it seems like that's, these things are happening more and more that's Oof. science oh god now the thing that we're here for tonight is the infamous the new the very awesome mostly football mock draft fantasy football and we have a very interesting pick tonight because we picked the randomizing of selections and it just so happens our very own alan has picked number one Rapid Dave coming in at pick number four, and I am back here at pick number 10. This is going to be very interesting to see. I am, I've am i never been in a fantasy football league with you guys. We are currently in a WNBA fantasy league together, but I do not know how you guys draft. I'm not very familiar. I think we were in a Yahoo league together with Dylan Moran, but that's very vague to me at this point. We were in a league. La- you were in one of our strikeout beer leagues last year. That wasn't the Dylan Moran league? No. That was okay. like three years ago. It's a strike out there <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely forgot how you guys drafted, so this is going to be a real refresher in my mind. You uh, should awesome. listen to the show sometimes. Awesome. It was I drafted awesome. That's how I drafted. Um, <laughs> I use my uh, head. Alan uses his heart, and that's just how it goes. Sometimes I, I use my really farts. To, uh, <laughs> what's that, Alan? Sometimes I use my farts. Oh, God. Such a I don't normally love to give my guests homework, but I did ask you guys a question before the show, before we get started. I asked you each which player currently at their ADP between now and week one of the NFL season. So three weeks of the preseason go by, all the news of training camp goes by between now and then. Which player's ADP do you think could rise the most and which player's ADP do you think could fall the most between now and then? And Alan, we'll start with you. Um, so So as far as falling... Saquon could could absolutely drop off the face of the earth because you you've got until tomorrow to find out what's going to happen with him. Is right. he going to sign that franchise tag? Is he not? It, there's even talks that he's going to sign it, but then he's not going to show up. You know, so who knows with him? Right? He's one of those guys where if you were just so happen to be drafting now, I was saying avoid that guy just because you have no. No clue. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. I mean, with the holdouts, it does seem like these guys eventually fold, but you're right. You never know. Yeah. Um, as far as who can rise the most between now and then, um, I just don't see anything happening between now and then that would cause someone to, to shoot up. 
Uh, cause these guys, you're not going to get a lot of play time. Anyone you're drafting is not getting a ton of play time in the preseason. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. That's fair. It, it may be someone, someone like maybe like a Dalvin cook, you know, uh, yeah. just because he doesn't have a team right now. So depending on where he goes, he could definitely go up, but he could definitely go down as well. Um, like a, like a, in a legal situation like Camara, you know, if you knew he was only getting one game, he might move up. Right. So it's, you don't know, right? Uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't really see. You know, maybe if somebody gets hurt, then you got some backups who could shoot up, but you can't predict injuries right now, right? What about you, RD? Uh, you know, Allen took Saquon from me, so I'll, I'll move on to someone else, someone who could fall. I think uh, Devonte Adams. You don't know who the quarterback is going to be out there. You have no idea at this point. Can Jimmy G pass a physical? I don't even know what's happening, and he's right now slotted for uh, ADP of sixteen point five. He's ranked number 16 on his sleeper app under half point PPR. He could tumble quite a bit, but he'll probably be picked up on his name alone in a lot of leagues yeah. and his potential of an amazing player that he is. Uh, someone that's kind of towards the top that I think could get some, uh, I don't know, just a little extra is uh, CD Lamb right now, number 13. And if Dak's looking good and the like limited practices and all that stuff they'll have him in, if he looks back to being 100%, Cowboys are showing they're going to throw a little bit more this season. Maybe, you know whatever uh, right. <laughs> you know. but he could he could squeeze in the top 10 he could be drafted in the first round now, i know uh when i was listening to you guys wide receiver rankings i believe brandon cooks came in at a crisp number 50 for you alan so watch out for that <laughs> or was that rd oh. maybe that was rd because you said you guys start somewhere I don't know i don't have my notebook near me or else Alan's I, I rankings are so crazy <laughs> Don't he oh, I, can't wait. I can't wait to see Jamison Williams in the third round. Dude, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. He like, wasn't saying draft in the third round. <laughs> this wasn't okay, like real, real, real quick thing. on that. I do I do want to touch on that real quick. I'll give you my two and then I want to touch on that real quick. So the yeah. guy I think could rise the most, if we see that, and it's not going to be Russell Wilson, but if we see Russell Wilson look like old Russell Wilson before the injury, Portland Sutton right now is going in the eighth round. And if he makes a few plays and reminds people why he got a thousand yards and six touchdowns, you know, in 2019, I think he could rise a few rounds. And then a guy who I'm not anti this guy. I just don't love where he's going. And I, the team he's on did not need him. B. John Robinson. I think if we don't see him make a lot of plays in the preseason and he looks like just a guy, and maybe Tyler Algier and Cortland Patterson still look really, or Cordero Patterson look really good. Maybe he could fall around two, you know, early round three. So I, I don't know. But Bichon's a guy I think is being very overdrafted right now for a rookie on a team that was already number one in rushing last year. And I just, he's not a Leonard Fournette with the power. He's not a, a Chris Johnson with the speed. So he's going to have to be really good at what he does, which is vision and um, catching the ball. You talk about an overpacked backfield, and Atlanta's one of those. They're, they're Miami Dolphins 2.0. Like, there's no way you can touch any of those guys. And I'm certainly not taking one of those guys overall. You know, I, mean, I, I played with the Atlanta backfield last year, and it just burned my ass up every single week. My only problem with uh, Jamison Williams, and I know we talked about this on, well, I, I was in the comments on Strikeout here this past Wednesday. So we were having a little back and forth. But my only thing, I understand the buys, and the buys are not going to affect you to week six. I get that. But when, you, when, and not if, when you have a big injury, you are going to be searching the waiver wire, and the first guy you're going to drop is the guy who's not going to be active for six weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, depends on who else is on my roster. That, that, that is fair, but I just think it's going to be very and, tempting to drop it. And it, uh, how injured is that guy? Am I just going to drop the injured guy? All, all things that are fair. It, it's just tricky to, to draft a guy. Maybe with your, with, okay, with your last pick, and that probably is what you're thinking with your last pick. Oh, he's got him ranked like 20th. <laughs> the guy's going to miss six weeks. A, a half of the fantasy football league. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Here are my number six pick. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, get out of my face. <laughs> Lunatic. <laughs> without any further ado, let's get this thing started. And, uh, Alan, let's see what you got. What are you thinking here with the first overall pick? It, it, it's CMC. Like, God dang. <laughs> All right, so Alan with the first overall pick, automatic CMC. We had Justin Jefferson, and this is the highest I've ever seen Travis Kelsey go, uh, which is going to make things pretty interesting for Rapid Dave here. He's got a number of great players available. Um, team three going early with Travis Kelsey, the top-ranked tight end on the board. So well, he's uh, Rapid Dave, Kelsey. 
<laughs> Ellie, is there anything you want to expand on with CMC, or you pretty much just feel like it speaks for itself? It, it's it just you just look at his production once he got over to San Francisco, and on top of that, he's going to be playing meaningful football for essentially the first time in his NFL career, right? Yeah. Carolina has not been good since he's gotten there. Um, you, you've got great coaching there in Kyle Shanahan. He's going, Kyle Shanahan's whole game plan is get him the ball and they're going to get him the ball any way they possibly can. Even if it's, he's going to, he'll throw the ball, he'll pass the ball, uh, catch it, run. Just, you might, you might see him line up at center. Who knows? You, you, you don't know. <laughs> now, I, let me ask you one thing. Because Brock Purdy is kind of murky right now with his health status. If you knew he was not going to be available maybe for one or two weeks, would that change anything? No, it's not changing anything for me with, with okay. him. Um, because w- w- you didn't see a ton out of Trey Lance when he was in there. But one thing that you can definitely guarantee is there are going to be some dump-off passes. And yeah. they'll run the ball a lot. And who's going to catch the dump-off passes and who's going to run the ball when they're running it a lot? CMC. I think with a bad quarterback, it would actually make me go Jefferson number one. You know, as much as I love CMC, but I would, I would, if I didn't think that Purdy was coming back and I had questions about the quarterback play, then he's right back. I mean, he, again, he was being drafted 101 back when he played right. in Carolina. The guy's got it, but there's a lot of miles, a lot of wear and tear on those tires these days. Uh, but give me, uh, give me the kid, give me Jefferson. Uh, if, if I, if there was a question about quarterback play in, uh, in San Fran. Yeah, you do have to – you just worry with a scrambling quarterback like um, like the kid there. If he's not going to dump it down, if he's going to scramble, steal some steal some touchdowns in the red zone type stuff. So that yeah. might make me go Jefferson as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm smack dab in a pickle here. I love Jamar Chase and I love Austin Eckler. You're, talk, you're looking at two of my favorite players. Uh, I've never had the privilege of uh, – drafting jamar chase so i guess this would be it right oh, <laughs> i mean listen you can't go wrong with draft, drafting austin eckler there you, you it's not a bad decision you cannot go wrong with that but um i never had a chance to jamar, uh, draft jamar chase so that's why he gets the he gets the nod all right uh so with that in mind let's see here how how did this happen I got AJ Brown. I've got Jonathan Taylor available. You took Jamar Chase for the explosiveness. I'm assuming uh, it was his homer pick. What's up, old school? How you doing, brother? I went homer. I went homer. You know, I, you're in a pickle here uh, for someone that's drafting in the number ten hole. Bijan Robinson is going to be there for that the exact same reason that we just talked about. Jonathan yeah, Taylor not. is a stud. AJ Brown's a stud. Ceedee Lamb's a stud. You're looking at someone who could now. You actually have a pretty phenomenal pick because you can get a little crafty here. You can yeah. go after a, a top receiver or a top running back and then get like a stud QB. I'm just saying, Patrick Mahomes is sitting there and, a, you know, that guy slings it. How have you guys, is that normal? What, what are you guys, is, um, I've been meaning to ask this actually, theories on the onesie positions. How early have you taken a quarterback in past drafts? I went after Allen last year. Yeah. You did? I think I, I, in the second round or third. It was watching the draft and watching it come back around. I think it was early third round. And I was like, he's there. Who else am I getting? I've already got a, a stud receiver, a stud running back. And then I was like, you know what? Let's cinch it up real quick. I think it depends on who's there too, right? And where you're picking. Like, so like, like with me sitting here with the, you know, the last pick in the second round, if Pat Mahomes is still there, I mean, which it won't, well, he won't be there. He won't, but if he is, yeah. then I'm like, go okay, Mont- I'm Brown make or... that, that, that decision, right? Do I have to make yeah. that choice then? Josh uh, Allen will probably be there, and then he'll probably end up taking him. Last year, I was taking Herbert in the third round um, in, in some leagues, third, fourth round, and it didn't can't quite pan out. He didn't have the year that, you know, he was predicted to have, but I was okay with it. I, I'm Go absolutely ahead. okay with just kicking the, the QB down the road. And grabbing one in the ninth or tenth round, really? Because, okay. You know, I just sometimes I really want to fill in these positions. I want to have a great receiver. I want to have a great running back. And then, you know, at that point, if I'm in a certain position where I can get Kelsey, you know, or Mark Andrews, I'm pulling the trigger. I want three studs. I want three studs in positions that, like, you go and get Kelsey or Mark Andrews. Those are guys that put up numbers that nobody else is even. They're they're tier one guys. They're yeah, they're sure. almost tier one wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Kelsey is. Uh, Kelsey is. Yeah. 
just to recap for people only listening, after Rapid Dave took Jamar Chase at four, we had Saquon Barkley go at five, Austin Eckler six, Cooper Cup seven, Tyreek Kill at eight, and Stefan Diggs at nine. Right before I'm on the clock here, and boy, I would look like a fool if I dug B. John Robinson and after I talked all that smack about him. Jonathan Taylor, I, I'm not feeling right now with the quarterback situation. I don't think he's going to have the same opportunity. He's coming off the injuries. A.J. Brown, obviously, is my guy as an eagle, but I'm not feeling that right now. Uh, he's just not enough catches. The, the up-and-coming Devontae Smith and the fact that Jalen Hurts runs so much makes me skeptical. So right here, as much as I love Nick Chubb, we talked about the explosive um, weeks that this guy gives you. We talked about the fact that he had the most catches last season. So what I'm going to do right here is take a guy who normally goes – you know, the past several seasons, he's gone in the top three, top five at least. So I'm going to take Derrick Henry here and see who comes back to me. Unbelievable. You could have got him on the rebound. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see what happened here at the end. You you um, could have got him on the rebound. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. What just uh, we happened? Bijan go after me at the 11, Jonathan Taylor at the 12, and then Team 12 took A.J. Brown to make a nice little Taylor Brown stack. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes goes at the 202 here to team 11. Now I'm back on the clock um, after the onesie position of Mahomes goes. And let's see who are my available options. What am I thinking here? Oh, it's got to be. I mean, me in this position, I think I like CD Lamb or Nick Chubb uh, or the like, Sun okay. God. Yeah. You know, it, do you want to go to stud running backs? Because let's be honest, Nick Chubb is a stud. But you can what also you go of- clear, clear run, uh, wide receiver one with CD Lamb. What are your thoughts on a guy like Josh Jacobs, Alan? I don't like Josh Jacobs at all this year. I think last year was an anomaly, and you're not going to see anywhere near that production, especially since you don't even know who the quarterback's going to be, right? You, uh, it, it, teams are going to stack the box. Even if Jimmy G's playing, you, you took a downgrade at quarterback no matter who's playing this year. Um I, I don't see Josh Jacobs. And again, Josh Jacobs is another one of those guys that had crazy number of, of carries yeah. between re- receptions and between rushes. Another guy that was right there around that 400 mark uh, regression year for, for Jacobs. He's been trash for the last two, three years. And then he jumps out for one year. He ain't coming back again. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and go real strong at running back, but I'm not going to take Josh Jacobs. I'm going to take another guy who traditionally has not caught a lot of passes, but he has no Kareem Hunt behind him this year. It's only Jerome Ford. And if you are like me and you think that Deshaun Watson is due for a bounce back year after shaking, you know, I hate the term shaking the rust off, but that, that's the only term that comes to mind right now. I think Watson has looked sharp and what you've seen in the off season videos that have come out from the Browns so far. And of course he's going to steal a few, you know, yards and touchdowns here with scrambling, but this is where I really like Nick Chubb. As my second running back, as my, I mean, how, how much better could you get there? He's such a talented guy. Only injuries can derail him. And if he gets some passing work like they've indicated in Cleveland possibly this year, this is a great stack for me here. So I'm going to take a Nick Chubb at the 203. So after Nick Chubb, you have CeeDee Lamb go, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Garrett Wilson right before Rapid Dave back here at the 209. And what are you thinking, sir? Crap. I got nothing but crap. Like, I'm going to have to pull the trigger here and go after Josh Allen, I think. I don't know. I got Jalen Waddle, which I'd really like to have two really good receivers. I've got nothing in the uh, the running back pool that's giving me a wiggle or anything down there. Um, if Jacobs fell to you, did, do you like? what do you think of Jacobs? Josh Jacobs? Nah, I'm out. Like, second yeah. round action? Eh, I don't know. I'm trying to avoid him as long, uh, along with uh, a couple other uh, people. To be honest, you know what? I'm not going to go run. I'm not going to go um, QB. I don't have any running backs that are sitting right there in front of me that I think are going to be amazing. Give me Waddle. Taking the explosiveness, the upside of Jalen Waddle right there, a guy who, as the number two wide receiver for his team, still had over a thousand yards, plenty of touchdowns. And if two is healthy this year, I mean, you can't go wrong with a guy who's so young. Sure, there's an injury risk because he's so small, but I mean, I, he showed out a lot. And he's not just a Big play guy. He'll get you the deep ends. He'll get you the tough yards across the middle, too. Yeah, I'd like him in the third round more than I like him in the second round. But Alan? I don't you're like the you have the advantage of, you know, if you like two guys, but unfortunately, plenty of guys have gone. And now, he's just mad because he's done. 
This is not only the, has this the highest that I've seen Travis Kelsey go. This is the highest I've seen Mark Andrews go in the second round. Crazy. Yeah, I see. Andrews is a guy that I was looking at. Uh, I absolutely love Mark Andrews, especially now that he's got Lamar back this year. Um, I just don't. Th- this is w- when you're when you're on the ends. You've got to look, and sometimes you got to reach. Um, because a guy won't be there when it comes back around to you, right? Famous so you really, you really got to look and just say, hey, who who do I really like? Who do I really want? And who's going to be there next time around? You know? Um, Were you had Josh Allen fallen to you? Are you ten? So you said you would have taken him. I, I probably would have taken Josh Allen, Mark Andrews, little Josh Allen, Mark Andrews action. Yep. Uh, I, I like having that those three on on my roster. Um, but man, like just looking, looking at it, looking, you know, here's who's, who's available now and who they're projecting to be available to me next round. You're looking at like Herbert and Terry McLaurin are, are the two top guys. You're like, I mean, I, I like Herbert, but I don't know. You so know? Who did DeAndre uh, Hopkins in? Well, I mean, he's projected to be gone by the time it comes back around to me. You know, and there's no no part of you thinking about a running back here stacking up. Um, I don't I don't like Tony Pollard and I don't like Brees Hall both coming off the injuries. Um, do you like Ramondre Stevenson? <laughs> I do really like Ramondre Stevenson. Like I'm looking at I'm looking at Ramondre. Uh, Najee's right there too. I I don't really care for Najee that much. Um. Man, like, I feel like I can get another running back that I really like when it comes back to me. Okay. So I'm I'm definitely gonna go with Ramondre. I I like him. Yeah. He's That's he's the, he's the guy there. Um, the only the only thing because he can catch the ball, he can run the ball. He's a goal line guy. The only thing that holds me back on him is New England, and Bill Belichick loves to change it up. Yeah, I I feel a little bit better about the fact that they signed James Robinson and then cut him. <laughs> True. So, yep. but you're you're really, I think that really says a lot about with Ramondre, right? They they yep. let they let Harrison, uh, Harris go, and they signed Robinson and cut him. So I, I feel like he's got a lot of a lot of faith in him. It doesn't happen often, right? That, that he has a a running back that he has a lot of faith in. So. Now here I got to look at a, at a wide receiver I think um, and maybe a T Higgins I kind of like Higgins I think Olave is going to have a pretty good year this year. Now, this uh, is what I like because RD is not wanting you to take a guy that he wants. No, I just want him to hurry up. I don't care if he picks <laughs> Zeus at this point. I just want him to shut up and pick. Jeez, oh Pete, you're God. so angry. <laughs> right? Who touched you and where? That's all I want to know. Uh, I'm not drinking because I'm only going to talk more and more as this thing goes on. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, I've already finished one, so I might as well grab my other one. I'm having a bunch of uh, uh, St. Arnold beers tonight. I, I think at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and the button for God's sakes. You shut your. You know, the more you talk, the more I'm just going to take my time. How about that? <laughs> you know, like it. I'm like, all right, I'll be back later. <laughs> I mean, no one Allen's up, and then I got like 15 minutes and run down the street. Let me go with. I want to take T. Higgins. I don't really like it, but I'm going to take terrible him. pick. Yeah, I think so too. That's an awful pick. Yeah, I I'll know. make mine short and so, oh, go ahead and catch us up here, Dylan, and I'll pick mine. Okay, so after Allen took T. Higgins there at the 301, we had Tony Pollard go, and then Brees Hall immediately. So the run on running backs goes, and T. Higgins, I'll say, is that guy this year. He's that guy. That if he's your wide receiver one, oh boy. Well, that was awesome. I love being on this show. It's like my favorite show. I, I don't yeah. have my camera. What the heck just happened? So the pizza guy just knocked on the door and I lost my mouse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pizza did you order? You look like a Domino's guy. She, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, there's so many random places around here. Cheers, guys. Mm. Um, but yeah, T. Higgins is that guy this year that if he's your wide receiver two, you feel good about it. You feel like you're going to get the touchdowns at enough work in this high flying Bengals attack to get something. But what? There's just something. It's like having Tyler Lockett as your one. You, you know you're going to get the numbers, but you just every other week is going to be like, am I going to get six points out of this guy? Oof. 
I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't Week know. Week three, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, RD, I'm, what's your thoughts here? Oh, sorry, Alan. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just, well, if you had a point, I don't want to just move on to him. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I feel like Cincinnati's going to have a much better year as far as passes, passing is concerned. I don't see them taking a few weeks to figure out what they're going to do this year like they did last year. Does this Ooh. change your – yeah, geez. This is awesome. Right. Hopefully they drive away. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. <laughs> yeah, don't go to my house, people. This is what you're going to hear. Uh, it, now, is this the type of thing that is – It's like hanging out with Alan. <laughs> you guys don't have dogs. This is great. No, he, well, I knew you know, my dogs are just behaved. Yeah, my dogs. Yeah. My dogs don't bark. No, he, the people that misbehave it is uh, the kids that come in every time. He's like, "Man, we're alive." They open door. Hey, what are you doing in here? And then my kid will come in here. He don't even live here anymore, but he'll show up on Wednesday at seven o'clock. And man, we're alive. He'll come sit down. <laughs> to the floor. Hey, what are you guys up to? It's like, <laughs> it's like, huh, Alan, you're over here. What's going on? I, yeah. Same thing that happens every. But no, we don't have any more animals here. R.I.P. Murph. Sorry, Murph. I do miss you, though. You're a cute buddy. Yeah. Was, uh, uh, is this the type of thing, Alan, that now this changes your strategy going forward? Are you going to be looking for potentially a wide receiver that is more volume heavy? Or are you just going to try to play it like water? Yeah, I, I'm very fluid when it comes to the draft. Now, I do have some ideas. I do have some guys that I, I like that are going a little bit later that yeah. I feel that I'll feel good about. Okay. Um, I probably even draft probably, you know, one of my next two picks will probably be a better wide receiver. So RD, obviously you doubled up here, wide receiver, two guys that if they hit are going to win you a week, no doubt. And Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle, what are you thinking here with your third round pick? Stud, Bell, Cal, Najee Harris. I like it. Had to. I got to give me a uh, running back. Um it's just one of those things, you know. I'm sitting there looking at Joe Burrow, but Kenneth Walker, I'm avoiding him. I'm not really working a whole. Jameer Gibbs, I liked him if uh, the Bengals would have drafted him, but he's on Detroit, so I'm not interested at all. Not even a wiggle. Um, and then you got some decent receivers, and then my boy Joe Mixon's coming up, but it's just a little too early, I think, for Joe Mixon and doubling up and stack. I'm I'm fine with stacking. I'm absolutely fine with stacking, but I think it's just a little too soon. I think uh, I think Najee should have a little bit better year than than um, Mixon. I think if he's healthy, you know, no doubt he's going to get plenty of work. Do you worry at all about Jalen Warren cutting in, or not so much? Not at all. Doesn't even. I don't even know who that dude is. Does he even play football? <laughs> so what I'm thinking here, I've got two backs that are definitely going to get a lot of work on the ground. Um, Derrick Henry, we'll see if Tannehill's healthy. I'm not worried about touchdowns. If if Deshaun Watson has the season, I think he's going to have. Not worried about touchdowns. So. If anything, going forward, I'm going to look for running backs that catch passes more uh, so I can get PPR points in my running back room. But right now, the best available include second-year wide receiver Chris Olave, quarterback Joe Burrow, who I think is overrated, and Kenneth Walker coming into his second year, who, I mean, the way they've drafted running backs and the way Pete Carroll likes to mix it up, I've got Jameer Gibbs and – uh, basically, I'm not considering running back here. So let's see who my top wide receivers are. We've got Chris Olave, who I had last season. And I was really impressed how he did. And, you know, say what you want about Derek Carr. Do you guys particularly think he's an upgrade over Dalton? I have to imagine you do, right? Somewhat? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, he <laughs> is. Yeah. I was going to say, yes. don't even. I was, I was looking at this list, and I was going to ask Alan. I go, Alan, out of this, you know, say these five or six guys that you got sitting here, who are the two that just stand out immediately? Yeah, good question. You know, it's it's the two dudes that get it done. There's Debo Samuel and Keenan Allen just sitting there. And yep. if I need a receiver, and one of those guys is getting picked up, and it's most likely going to be Keenan Allen. It, it, for me, if I'm drafting a receiver here, I'm taking Olave. Uh, oh. I almost I almost took Olave with my pick. It was between T. Higgins and Olave. I I like what I saw at Olave last year, and again, upgraded quarterback situation. You've yeah. you've got a better guy throwing him the ball. Plus, he's he's worked through that first year. Now we're in that second year. Look for that step up this year for Mobave. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think anything more interesting that I know now where DeAndre Hopkins is. Well, yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, I mean, it, Alan has Chris Olave uh, ranked a little bit higher and whatnot. But yeah, with, you know, Samuel and Allen, when they come up, they get picked up. You know what I mean? It, it's one of those things that I'm a big Allen guy, but he is a little old. You know, a little injury prone and whatnot. And there's uh I can't remember who they I can't remember who they drafted or who's over there now squeezing Quentin, in a little bit. Huh? Quentin Johnson, the kid out of TCU. Quentin Johnson. So yeah. 
all fair points. And um, those guys are definitely all reliable. And I like the next few guys on this list, which is why I'm going to swing for the fences here and take That's the guy who had a fantastic rookie year. I'm going to take Chris Olave and bank on one of these um, reliable wide receivers coming back to me. There you go. So the picks after Olave, we had Jameer Gibbs go, Aaron Jones at the very end of the third round, Debo goes at the beginning of the fourth round, and then Kenneth Walker with the 402, leaving me some great options here. So I still have Keenan Allen, still have Amari Cooper, Ridley Hopkins. And what I'm going to do here, no, I think you guys, I mean, let's see here. At the tight end position, if I wanted to, there's TJ Hawkinson. If I wanted to, at the quarterback position, there's Joe Burrow. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, I go, that you want to go tight end there? And he's sitting, Hawkinson's sitting right there. Um, you know, if you want a guy, you want to stud, he, you know, not tier one, but he's going to be a top four, top five tight end. He's going to get it done up there in uh, Minnesota. And it's like, if you want some studs, which you have studs already kind of piling up, court, right. uh, you know, well, receiver, you're, you know, lacking a little bit, but um, it'd be interesting there. Or you can get Justin Fields. Justin Fields just sitting right there, right for the taking. And boy, I also, I mean, listen, here's a guy we didn't talk about much, but if I knew that Joe Mixon was healthy and his legal troubles were figured out, as a matter of fact, this is going to be a pretty good experiment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Joe Mixon on the chance that he is ready to go. No, really He's good to go, man. I know I'm going to be lacking a wide receiver. It's going to be interesting to see who comes up when I'm back on the clock. But if a guy who is without a doubt, the bell cow for this team now without Samaj P. Ryan behind him. He should catch a few more passes. He's going to be on this Bengals offense that everyone, you know, thinks is going to score plenty of points this season. So give me Joe Mixon. He's been producing year after year, and I'll take him to stack with my already two reliable backs and my uh, questionable wide receiver situation, but we'll address that the next time. Rapid Dave, what you thinking? I'm smack dab in hell is what I am. Um, Calvin Ridley's up. I don't know, don't want any part of that. It's too early for Justin Fields, J.K. Dobbins. I'm avoiding any Baltimore running back like I always have um, because they all get hurt in preseason. You know what I'm saying? You got DeAndre Hopkins. I'm not touching him. Herbert's there. <sighs> Getting Herbert in the fourth round isn't a bad idea. You know, five QBs have already left the table, but I still think there's more out there. But unfortunately – I need a running back. I don't trust Miles Sanders. I don't trust Damian Pierce. Came I mean, I'm in hell. Dalvin Cook's sitting right there, but he's not even on a damn team. <laughs> so, uh, to be honest, you're, you're not big on Sanders at the in the fourth round. No, no, I don't trust. I don't like Miles Sanders anyway because he already come out and said that he doesn't care about fantasy, which fantasy is a direct representation of what he does on the field. So if he doesn't care about his work. Yeah, why do I care about his work? You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> He's no Austin Eckler saying saddle. And obviously, <laughs> you know, with with Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson going in the third round, Burrow's gone here in the fourth. So really, skin like you said. I mean, you're looking at Herbert. So I think what I'm gonna He's do Jackson goes. Oh, I don't want Kittle either. He gets hurt way too much. I, I this is where you would be seriously thinking Justin Herbert or George Kittle. I just got bad feelings right now about what I want to do. Jerry Judy's right there as well. I'm in hell. It seriously is hell. So you know what? Let me go ahead and just knock out this stupid quarterback position. And, 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 and plus, I didn't want to see while you were there picking. It's one of those where you look at it and it's like, if you wanted Herbert, you had to take him because you knew he wasn't getting past me. Well, right. that and he's already ranked so high. So either you or the auto was going to take it, and you were. And it's only two spots away. So yeah, I don't worry. I did you a favor because now Justin yeah. Fields off the clock or off the table. Uh, uh, ju- okay, I'm, well, I mean, I wasn't even looking at him. That's I what had- I was going to ask you, Alan. I know you're not a Fields fan. Where would <laughs> he have? To, where would he have to drop in order for you to take him? I, I want it. Yeah, he would never take him. No, I- so he's sitting there next to Kirk Cousins, and you're taking Kirk Cousins. Yes. Yeah. All right. He, he he'll take. He doesn't like any of Bears because that's the only team they've ever been able to beat over the, like the last thirty no. years, right? It's but he'll true. take Aaron Rodgers. He'll bring Aaron Rodgers home, cook him a nice meal, let him pork his girlfriend. And I don't know why because they own his. Uh, he owns their ass too. So I, I have no idea. I don't know. The Not anymore. Hey, Aaron Rodgers' last uh, pass thrown as a Packer interception to the Lions. Yeah, because he didn't give a shit. He didn't care if it went to the ref. He, he, he's like, he was so done. I like, he's, 
I was going to hold on to that forever. You know that that game that Aaron Rodgers didn't give any shit about? Yeah, we were there. We beat him. It's co- convenient. It's like he loses, so all of a sudden it's like, oh, he didn't care. Even, he did. though, he would, even though he wins and he's in the playoffs. Yeah, he obviously didn't care. Yeah. So this, this has actually been really interesting because, you know, we know where Kamara sits with his legal situation just now with the NFL, and Kamara's not gone yet. I don't know where Mixon sits with his legal situation and injury, but I took the risk here at 403. And we still, even though we know where DeAndre Hopkins is right now, do not have him off the board yet here in the fourth round. So, Alan, what are you thinking? I. It's tough. It is. So I've got a, I got a couple wide receivers here I'm looking at. Like, I, Obviously, your team right now consists of McCaffrey, Stevenson, and T. Higgins. Yes. And so I'm looking at receiver wise. I I like Calvin Ridley. I I think he he's going to have a pretty decent season this year. Um, you do. D-Hop, I'm, I, yeah, I do. I I think he is going to have a pretty decent season. Uh, you got a team that's really really big on the pass, and all signs out of training camp and OTAs and everything is he looks great. Um, yep. they're saying he looks. And the big thing for him was. There that last season and a half, it was a it was a big mental health thing for him, right? Yeah. His yep. head was and all all accounts, everything that he's saying and everything you're hearing is he's he's figured everything out with the whole gambling thing. He said that was rock bottom for him. Um and he's learned a lot, learned how to deal with a lot of things. So I, I am liking him. Do I like him as my two number two wide receiver? No, not really. Um, I know we're a few seasons away from him, but this is a guy who has scored double digit touchdowns in the NFL. He's he looked great, right? And yeah. now that's also with Julio on the other side of right. him, which definitely helps him out. Um, you got what Christian Kirk over there is the guy, another guy, uh, and Evan Ingram there. So you, there's a lot to keep an eye on as far as receivers are concerned. Out sure. there in Jacksonville, and yep. you know, Sunshine is just going to toss that ball around, right? Um, I, I'm actually expecting him to take a pretty big leap forward this year. Uh, they kind of took it easy with his first year. Last year, they kind of opened it up with him a lot more, and expect expect them to open it up a lot more this year. Um, but I, I, I think I'm going to go with like double wide receivers here, and I, I am going to go ahead and go with Calvin Ridley. Um, well, okay. Got all that just to pick the guy, huh? Right. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> In the next, I, I've got several guys I like, but I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and take. I'm gonna take Drake London. Um, okay. I I like what he he did the last four games of last season. Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna average you somewhere. He was averaging, I think it was like. 60 yards or eight, 60 or 80 yards and like six receptions or something like that. So yeah. if I'm getting that out of him, I I'm, I'm okay with that production. If not for Cortland Sutton, he was going to be my um, potentially biggest riser just with the way the season ended him and Ritter clearly on the same page. Now, why, what is it about Kittle that you're clearly not in on? Um, Injury wise and other guys I like. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, yep. I don't know how much I'm going to get out of him. Again, we've kind of talked a little. If I know Brock Purdy is 100% good to go, I think that's a different choice. But what, if you've got to go with Trey Lance for a few weeks, I think that hurts you. Trey Lance is in there. I don't like him. Brock Purdy's in there. I like him. Because when Purdy was in there, Kittle looked good. Mm-hmm. Now, RD, you're sitting here. You've got two explosive wide receivers. You've got a potentially solid running back in Harris looking for a bounce back. And Justin Herbert now, who clearly. You know, young additions and a guy who has passed for plenty of yards before and Justin Herbert. Where are we thinking here? I'm going to guess running back, but I don't know. You guess right. I'm going wild card, baby. I'm dropping all the way down to the 63rd ranked James Conner. Oh, look at that. Another... He won't be there when he comes back around. I want him now. You, go, you got to get your guys. I like it. The Cardinals at, at, at points last season looked so bad. It's easy to forget how good James Conner was when he was good. So they didn't add anyone in the draft. They really didn't add anyone in free agency. There's no reason to believe he's not going to be the three-down guy again this year. And if Kyler comes back earlier than we think, then that's a real steal here in the fourth round. Fifth. Fifth round. Fifth round here, and you're just getting a potentially three-down stud. 
Yep. I had to go for it. You know, you see a guy like Alan and I talk about this all the time, right? If you don't think your, your guy's going to be there, like I like Judy, I really do, but I've already got two receivers that are already going to be my studs and my starters and stuff like that. We didn't talk about composition of the actual um, team setup. If it was three or two receivers, if it was a flex or super flex, I assume it was two receivers or three, two yeah. running backs, a tight end and a, and a flex. But, uh, but yeah, for me, it, the only name that popped up after this was Judy. That's the only person I would have really considered. George Kittle was on the fence, but like Alan said, if you don't know what's going on out there. Yeah, I should have clarified that beforehand. This is a 12-team half PPR, and we are doing a single quarterback, uh, two running backs, two wide receivers, single tight end, a flex, and then we're going to have six bench spots here. I did keep the kicker in defense just to kind of, you know, after we get all of our main selections, just to kind of recap where we are. And then I am curious to see who you guys like for – kicker and defense if one of you goes early with Justin Tucker or not. So that's kind of interesting to me. So I figured I'd keep those guys in there. But, yeah, it's not double flex. It's not three-yard receiver or anything like that. Um, so here I am sitting here with Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Chris Olave, and Joe Mixon. I feel pretty secure at the running back position. But to be honest, um, seeing someone like Alexander Madison sitting right there who I know is going to be – I don't necessarily think he's going to be like, as effective as Delvin Cook, but I know he's going to be a three-down guy for Minnesota – and then, I mean, obviously, Dalen Cook himself is sitting right there. Christian Watson, boy, exploded last season for the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers there. I, I can't have that same confidence with Jordan Love. Chris Godwin, I like, I don't love. So my wide receiver options are very interesting right now. Uh, never been a Mike Williams guy. I know RD loves him, but I just hate that he gets injured so often. So this wide receiver thing is putting me in a pickle. And it makes me want to see who comes back to me. At quarterback, my options are Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, and Deshaun Watson, and Tua if I wanted to go quarterback. I would consider Tua. And then at tight end, we still have Kyle Pitts and Dallas Goddard here. A few more tight ends I like on the board. So this makes it tough for me. And what I think I'm going to do, man, Alvin Kamara is still on the board here in the fourth round. I the, tell you round the end of the fifth round. And the fifth round, Delvin Elvin Kamara is still here. He'll be there until the eighth, man. Ain't nobody taking him. Yeah. He's got pretty good. Him... <laughs> this is really tough. I don't like any of these. I don't love any of these wide receivers, to be honest. You just scroll past two I love. So I know. I know. <laughs> Lockett's out there. You got Christian Kirk. They're scrolling past Christian Watson sitting there. He's the only one out there, you know? <laughs> He didn't even mention your boy, Mike Williams. He scrolled right past. I'm like, God, there's Brandon Ayuk, too. And, and Mike. <laughs> I know. All these guys are here. Yeah, well, I, honestly, I, I, I would love to see like these that. guys come back to me. I'd love to see him come back to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a guy who had 1,000 yards last year, and he's been old reliable, and Geno Smith didn't take me away from him. I will take Tyler Lockett here, too. What am I, what am I, 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 love, I love Lockett. I've loved him for years. I'm nervous right. about him with the addition of Jackson Smith and Jigba this year. I, I really am. That's fair. I, I just think that he's been consistent for so long. And even with DK in the picture, Gino looked Lockett's way plenty of times. I forget how many targets he had, but it was a lot. Uh, Christian Watson goes right after I took Lockett and then Pitts at the end of the fifth round. Delvin Cook, uh, without a team, goes at the beginning of the sixth. And then Chris Godwin. So there's still plenty of wide receivers I like. And even. A running back I like at Alexander Madison here. So let's see. Boy, do I want to go four deep with my running backs and really lock it up? Or do I want to go with a third wide receiver here? I think what I'm going to do is really lock up my running back position here, take Madison, and uh, see what happens to the wide receiver later because there's a lot of guys I like. I mean, they think he's the stud, he's the stud out there now. So I mean, he, it's his only option, right? I mean, it, it feels early. Um, obviously, he wasn't ranked the highest on the board, but if I know he's going to be a three-down guy, which I really feel like he is, that's the way Minnesota's used Cook for the last few years. Besides when he gets hurt, then you're getting a pretty good value there in the sixth round as a three-down uh, running back. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let's talk about this. I want to talk about the, the the running back that goes right off the board right there after you take Madison. Yep, Swift, DeAndre Swift, that, uh, right that after high. You know my feelings about him, especially after this last year. You know, I I was I was I was okay with him going. Uh, he's produced like you're you're missing we're missing like forty yards 
rushing and like 20 yards receiving per game. Um, going to a crowded backfield there in Philly where yep. they brought on Penny. H- how do you feel about Swift this year? I, I think that's high. Honestly, I think that's very high for a guy who is not going to score as many touchdowns. You know, I think Rashad Penny could finish with more touchdowns for sure. And Jalen Hurts doesn't – he's one of those guys. He's not – he can scramble. He can run. He's not going to dump it off to the running back as much as a Jared Goff does. So I do think this is very high for DeAndre Swift. Yeah, he's untouchable at this point. I, I wouldn't touch him. I, w- I absolutely would not draft him. A- after what he did this last year and just seeing that he just – you know, I don't know what it is, but he doesn't have it. They didn't utilize him at all. And then when he got hurt, that's that also spelled. But he, he wouldn't come back in. Like, even when he came back in, he was not the same after sitting for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. He just, he doesn't, I don't feel like he has like that extra drive that just, but you, you got to get in there and you got to do something. You know, last year during a hard knocks, you saw, do Staley just getting on to him because he just he kept taking the easy routes and going down and not fighting and just he just doesn't have it like mm-hmm. and after seeing him for a few years I, I was able to be like you know what yeah I was real high on it going in the last year and now I see who he is there you go well, after I take my fourth running back the really short that position in Madison off goes Swift Goddard Michael Pittman Mike Williams, which I know really sucks for Rapid Dave, and then Trevor Lawrence goes off the board here, even though he already has a quarterback. So Rapid Dave, now you're looking pretty good. Two wide receivers, two running backs, and a quarterback. What you thinking? I mean, immediately I saw Brandy Nayuk, and I was like, I'm going to get this. He's the guy I want. But with uh, since there's only two receiving spots on this team with a flex option, obviously, Darren yep. Waller is with the Giants now. He's sitting right there, all nice and purdy, looking good. You know, I need a tight end. It's a mock draft. We're trying to have a little bit of fun here. I, I mean, personally, if we did three uh, receivers, it's Brandon Ayuk. I, I need to. I want my roster filled out. Uh, I want it filled out nice and tight. Uh, even though Mike Evans is sitting right there staring at me, but uh, you know what? Let's fill out the roster. I'm going Darren Waller. But yeah, normally, if I needed three receivers here, it's Brandon Ayuk. I've heard you guys talk about Evans before. I know. You guys do not believe in Baker at all. Neither do I. But, man, I mean, the streak of a 1,000 yards is just something you got to respect. And the, just the way he plays the game is something you got to respect. And I agree. It, it's very tempting to take him there. Um, but like you said, you locked up your tight end position with someone who had some huge games in Las Vegas. Hopefully, you know, they traded a third-round pick for him. Um, that wide receiver group in New York is very amb- ambiguous ambiguous as they say uh nobody knows who's going to be the wide receiver one out there so waller could really end up being the guy with the most receptions for new york so that's a that's a good pick there in the sixth round at the very end of the sixth round pretty much marquise hollywood brown goes after him isaiah pacheco who's dealing with kind of a hand injury right now for kansas city goes at 6 11 allen you have two running backs three wide receivers no quarterback no tight end what you think uh I, i mean we were just, you guys were just talking about him. If I'm, if you told me I can go ahead and grab Mike Evans in the seventh round. Yes. You know, I'm taking Mike Evans first and foremost. Um, He's going to score so many points on your bench. It's going to be amazing. It's <laughs> he, he's, he's someone who by the end of the year could be my number one ride, ride receiver. Right. Um, With this bunch. I, yes. I, I Do don't think really the disparity between him and Godwin should be as it is. I think that it will be, they'll both be pretty close as far as receptions. Um, Same look, round in this one, which is pretty interesting. Look, look for Godwin to have more yards, but Evans to have more touchdowns. Okay. So right around the same for receptions, but then you're, you're doing the give and take on the touchdowns and the, and the yards. And then for me, I'm, I'm definitely taking David Montgomery here. Um, oh, if he wasn't going to make it if you didn't take him either. It's it, yeah. And, that's someone that I that I honestly think is someone who could be a, a the potential for a top ten running back this year. Uh, look at what he did in Chicago with a just a crap offensive line, and now he's going to have one of the best offensive lines in the league. I absolutely love it. I, I think you're going to see a lot of him and Gibbs on the field at the same time, especially the first six weeks. Look for Gibbs to be lined up at receiver a lot, 
and Montgomery to be there in the backfield. But yeah, I, I love Montgomery right there. No, I think it's a great pick. You're getting Montgomery, I mean, four rounds after Gibbs, and this is the guy who could easily score more touchdowns. Montgomery's no slouch when it comes to catches. You know, if he proves to be a better pass protector than the rookie, he's going to be out there on third downs too. So here you are in the seventh round getting potentially a three-down back for Lions if Gibbs doesn't step it up. Yep. RD, you got your tight end, you got your quarterback, you've got some explosive wide receivers, some – reliable running backs, but I would say running backs that even you would admit may not win you a week. What are you thinking here? Uh, you know what? I totally missed this. I, I meant to do this instead of the last pick that I had for Waller. I was actually going to get Ayuk, lock him up, and then kick the can down the road to scoop up Evan Ingram. Um, so that was supposed to be the plan. I got a little sidetrack, you know, to drink it and stuff. You know, you're having a good time. <laughs> a but uh, Ayuk was right before you here. Yeah, so that's that was my plan. I should have did it, but I didn't. That's why you got to pay attention and uh, you know whatnot. But for me, uh, in this position and what's kind of coming around the corner, what's available, I've kind of already got myself in this little situation. I got to go Christian Kirk. I was going to go Dave Montgomery, but you know, as soon as I saw the pick kind of go around, I go, oh, gee, he's going to scroll down and see him. Um, you know, Dave Montgomery won me a league one year when he was with Chicago. Amazing running back. He still got it, and he's a big boy and likes to pound. Takes so, it to I went to work. <laughs> so who we, here we are. I mean, three rounds after Kelvin Ridley, and you're getting the guy that finished first for the Jags last year and catches in yards. Um, maybe not the amount of touchdowns you would like for a guy they paid the money for, but I mean, look, he's not he's he's been in football, he's got the familiarity, he's got the chemistry with Trevor Lawrence. So to get the number one wide receiver for this team from last year in the seventh round to balance out, you know, Chase and Waddle, I think is a really good pick. Um, after Kirk goes, you've got Javante Williams kind of dealing with an injury right now in the seventh round. Alvin Kamara uh, falling all the way to the seventh round, what, three rounds after I took Joe Mixon. Uh, Deontay Johnson, finally, uh, Pittsburgh wide receiver goes here in the seventh round. Uh, James Cook, wow, who knows what could happen with him. He could be, you know, a top 10 finisher running back for the Bills, or he could be just kind of irrelevant, a few yards here, a few catches there. And then um, A.J. Dillon down here in the seventh, uh, 709 for the Packers. I'm in a position where I feel very confident in running back with Henry Chubb, Mixon, and Madison. I've got the young explosive guy in Olave. Where are you guys at with Mike Thomas? Is there any potential he comes back this year? Looks like old Michael Thomas. I said Michael Tom, like Tomlin. I go with the coach for the you – know, <laughs> yeah, he's got a better, any, chance, there any got chance? A better chance of being on the field than uh, – <laughs> and Michael Slant Man, Slant Man, go hang out. He gets me every year. He gets me every single year. And you know, if I if I get him late, maybe. But God, can't, he can't stay healthy. And then he all he does is start fights with idiots on Twitter. Like you're the one that gets hurt all the time, not us. I mean, we're still just fat and idiots on Twitter. You know what I mean? Like Jesus. Yeah, I just yeah. Yeah, that would be my only thing with Olave is I just wouldn't want Michael Thomas to come back looking like old Michael Thomas, but I think we're just so far removed from that, and he's still not even really fully participating. He's kind of off to the side still after all this mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. it, he definitely has the best quarterback he's had since Breeze was there, but yep. I it, I just don't think the guy wants to play football anymore. Like. Now, I do have a dynasty league where I will end up keeping him because it's off of points and he's worth one point. So based off of what I want to get in the in the draft as far as who will be available, it's a no zero zero risk, high reward type thing, right? If he doesn't work out, oh well. It didn't cost me anything and I didn't miss out on anything. But I I I, I pro I don't think I see myself drafting him. In the he's just, yeah, he's still, you know, questionable. Obviously, he's getting some work in, but it, I don't know. I don't even know if this guy's going to play. And it, and I'll be honest with you, seventh round is about seven rounds too early for him. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting here. I need a wide receiver, but I have some very uninspiring guys in Burks. Um, obviously, can't go Smith and Jigmo with Lockett already on my team. George Pickens, who flashed last year with Pickett, and then Jordan Addison. You know, is Minnesota with that number two role? Is he just a replacement for Adam Thielen, or does he have a lot more to prove? Jahan Dawson, Tony, Brandon Cooks. I mean, some names I'm looking at. I hope these guys come back to me. Corlin Sutton, my high riser. I hope he comes back to me because I think I might take him. But right here, uh, onesie positions, you know, Evan Ingram's not a guy I'm looking at right now. 
if I'm looking at quarterback, and this is very scary, I've got three guys very intriguing right here who one of them is going to come back to me. So I should just take the take the shot that they come back to me. But Dak Prescott for the Dallas Cowboys, Deshaun Watson for the Cleveland Browns, and Tua sitting right here. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and take a young stud in the hopes. I, I'm going to take Sutton right here, actually. <laughs> I'm going to take Cool Sutton right here, my high riser, in hopes that Russell Wilson looks like who he used to be. And uh, so Dak went off the board there. Uh, Jahan Dotson right after I took Sutton. Then Dak at the very end of the seventh. George Pickens, 801. Jordan Edson, 802. So now I'm sitting here with my three wide receivers being Chris Olave, Tyler Lockett, and Corlin Sutton, which I feel pretty good about. If uh, Again, that depends on Russell. But um, come back here to the quarterback position. Am I banking on Watson, who I talked up earlier, shaking off the rust, or am I wanting Tua with that high-flying offense with the risk of him getting injured? And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot for the fences here with Tua. Okay. I'm going to take Tua there at 8.03. Um, banking on him staying healthy. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle could be an explosive offense. If Delvin Cook joins it, then it makes it all the better. Um, so there we go. Locked up my quarterback there with Tua and Deshaun Watson being my options. Nice. What do you guys think of that, first of all? Uh, I, I like Tua there. Uh, he was someone I was kind of hoping was going to fall down to me, honestly. Um, it, it's it's. You're, I think you're getting a low risk there with a high upside for reward. What, yeah, here we that? are in the eighth round, and there goes Tua. Right after that goes Traylon Burks, Antonio Gibson, two tight ends, and Evan Ingram and Pat Fryermuth. So thank God Rabbit Dave, you took a tight end early. <laughs> uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba goes, and now we are back with you, sir. Yeah. Um, you know, I took a receiver last time. I'd love to just keep going to pound town with some of these guys, but there is someone that's kind of sticking out right now that he's still around. Um, I'm trying to scroll to find him because I'm like, well, where is he? Um, hold on, hold on. I got to go all the way back. Hey, if you got to scroll all the way down, maybe wait till next round. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting him. You know, it's funny because Antonio Gibson went before him, but Antonio Gibson's the second stringer on this team currently, right? And I think with uh, the situation, I need a running back. It's going to be my backup, but it has the potential of being a stud. Uh, give me Brian Robinson. I love that pick. I think the team loves Brian Robinson. I think that he showed, you know, some flashes of what he can do last year, even after getting shot <laughs> several times. Yep. So, yeah, you know, obviously Antonio Gibson has an injury history, and if Robinson has this backfield all to himself, you got him there in that basically bottom of the eighth round, some serious value. If I didn't go Robinson there or I didn't go Kirk before, I was seriously going to pull the trigger on Quentin Johnston. Absolutely. No questions asked. Uh, he would have been my guy if I would have got a running back to the the uh, round before. So there we go. Uh, RD locking up three wide receivers, three running backs there, both one two positions done for. So he's basically filling his bench at this point. Mm -hmm. um, here we are sitting with Allen, who has two workhorse running backs, three – four straight wide receivers and then coming back with some serious value uh, with David Montgomery in the seventh round, still no onesie positions. What are you thinking here? Alan? I don't know, man. Like it's, there's a lot of, it's just God awful. Just a complete dumpster fire. It's the worst team I've ever seen drafted. You only got like one pick, right? <laughs> it's, it's so awful. Are you um, considering Watson here? no, I'm not. Um, That's just, just because he's hoping for like you know little a rod. <laughs> who is your while we're here? Who I mean, since you're clearly going to punt the position, who is your favorite end of the draft uh, quarterback? <sighs> Let me see. Who, are, who are the quarterbacks in this league here? Let's RD see. and I both have ours, so we're not going to steal them from you. I mean, I, late round two. Like, listen, there's there's some there's some. I, I, like I always say, there's some ass to be had late, late at night in the bar, but uh, <laughs> I'd say Dak Prescott would be my absolute grab them late, super late round. Now, unless you're, you're in a, if you're late. like us here, we're in Dallas. Yeah, I mean not last round, but I'm saying you know hanging about. You know, you didn't pay a premium. You've already got your whole starting lineup sitting there, and you're wanting the guy that it, he's going to sling it. He's going to have to. There's so much pressure on this kid to do something this year. Uh, all the other quarterbacks that are just hanging about, they're whatever. But, like, Dak, I think Dak, or, or seriously, 
if we're talking serious, Russell Wilson. Okay. Russell Wilson I, is going to sling it this year. I wouldn't blame him for being a homer because Goff had several high finishes last season. So if he says Goff, I'm not going to hate on him. Uh, so I got three guys that, I, that I'm going to look at like late. Kurt Cousins is, okay. is a guy I'm going to look at late. Yeah. Uh, I'm just not going to play him any primetime games. You're just not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared Goff, the, the guy played great last year, zero turnovers in like the last nine games. One of the number one offenses in the league last year. Expect them to do even better this year. And then Russ. I, I like okay. Russ late because I just think he he got beat down so bad last year, and everybody talks so much s. I mean, even to to the point where you had guys talking about how you might think he's an athlete, but he looks like a sack of potatoes. Oh god! And, and he he came in. He lost a lot of weight. He's in shape. He's refocused. You've got a good coach there this year. You don't have Billy Hackett back there this year. Right. Uh, you, you've got but Sean Payton, you, can hack an actual, it. you know, an actual NFL head coach who can do something with a guy. I, I, I think you can get a lot of value with Russ really late. So okay. well, those are some of the guys that I'm going to look at pretty late in this draft. Um. I mean, a guy that that I like now. I, I I'm sitting with, I'm sitting with three running backs. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go with a fourth running back here. Um, now I, I typically I think I might have taken with the next pick, but I don't know who I'm taking as my. I'm going to take a running back and a wide receiver here. Give me Jamal. Give okay. me Jamal Williams here, especially with you're just so much up in the air about Kamara. He's pleading no contest. You might see suspension, missing some games, and Jamal's he's he's your he's your TD guy. You know, even if Kamara is playing, if they get into the red zone, especially within the five yard line, that ball's going to Jamal Williams. And that's what's kind of interesting about your team is like back to back guys who maybe aren't projected to be the number one for the team, but could finish higher with the rushing touchdowns. Yeah, so looking at that, then wide receiver wise, I, I, I kind of like Quentin Johnson. Uh, some of the other guys here, I'm I'm not really, I, I'm not really big on a lot of the guys that are kind of slated here, right? Uh, Gabe Davis last year was supposed to be his year, and he brought he brought a bag of nothing really to you. We yeah. already talked about Michael Thomas, Juju Smith Schuster. I, I know. Uh, maybe you might be getting something out of Zay Flowers this year. You got Lamar right. really focused. Zay and Rashawn Bateman are, are actually two guys that I really like. Um, I, I'm not ready to take Jameson just yet. Um, here, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with give me, give me Quentin Johnson here. Well, obviously, you kind of had a bad taste in your mouth when you took T. Higgins there as your wide receiver one. Do you feel better about your group now with Ridley, London, Mike Evans, and now Quinn Johnson? I do. I do. Okay. A, a group as a whole, I can I can find two guys that play really good on a week-in, week-out basis. Yep. All right, RD. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do any of this. Like, you know, this is where fantasy football just gets like really dumb. So after, uh, <laughs> by the way, after Allen took Johnson, Gabe Davis and Rashad Bateman are off the board. Yeah, I mean, the only person I would have took here, I think, was Johnson. Uh, Johnson. Uh, everything else I'm looking, I'm like, I don't like them, don't care. But uh, I guess we got to fill in some spots. And then most of these people are going to be backup, uh, handcuffs, things like that. I don't even know who I got on my team. It's just, yeah, they're all studs. But there, don't there's a them. roster button you can click over there. <laughs> yeah, what I'm, I'm looking at, they're all studs. I don't need backups, right? You know, it's like, <laughs> what a backup. You know what? I'm done drafting. It's been fun, guys. Yeah. I, it's one of these, uh, I drafted such a great team. I'm not dipping into the bye. I don't even care if it's a bye week. I'm not dipping into the uh, uh, whatever. Um, I mean, if I had to go somewhere, maybe just back up on the running back. I I would. I did say I was going to stay away from any Philadelphia running backs, but Rashad Penny sitting right there. Samaji P. Ryan, because you know homeboy's not going to stay healthy in Denver. Right. I I like Khalil Herbert, but you know he's just a fill in guy, just like anybody else. I think about just going ahead and get my kicker out of the way. <laughs> so is this, now let me ask you this is this a point where you feel like are you regretting the herbert pick do you wish you'd gone with a positional uh selection there 
I mean, not really. So when you look at who came before Herbert, you know, or who came after him, you know, it's like Ridley. No, yeah. London. Nope. Uh, some guy that just got put on the Tennessee Titan. Nah, I don't like none of these guys. I don't care about any of them. Okay. Now, if I wanted to reach for someone, maybe Judy. Judy would have been the only one I would have like, you know what? Let me go ahead and snag Connor. And then on the rebound, I'll grab Judy. Gotcha. That's about it. Everybody else, I don't I don't care for. I do love Lockett, but uh yeah, no, I don't I mean just I'm gonna just pick a name here because I need to get going. There we go. <laughs> so Penny comes off the board here with R D in the ninth round. A guy who may be, you know, the leading touchdown scorer as far as running backs go for the Philadelphia Eagles. After <laughs> Penny goes, we've got David and Joku. Samaj P. Ryan, Deshaun Watson, Zach Charbonnet, RB2 for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Juju goes at 909. And now here I am with no tight end. I do have a quarterback here at 910. My top selections as far as all goes Michael Thomas still sitting there, Zay Flowers, Khalil Herbert. Um, Richardson is a guy who, had I not taken two, is interesting. But I think too many people are thinking that just because he can run, and the coach now is the Eagles' former coordinator, that it's just going to be, oh, remove Jalen Hurts, fill in Anthony Richardson. In my opinion, Jalen Hurts became a better passer at Oklahoma, so he already took that stride before he went to the NFL. Anthony Richardson has not taken that stride as a passer yet, so I think you're looking at more of like a, you know, if he's like this year's Justin Fields and he can get you a lot of rushing stuff, then fine. But I don't think you're going to get a lot of passing work out of him. Um, mm -hmm. So that being said, you know, obviously, boy, if I could break Allen's heart here and take Jamison Williams, that would I be thought pretty, about it. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I've seen quite a few people take Devon A chain in drafts. I'm not a big fan of his. So I'm going to take the chance here that Baltimore is what they say they're going to be this year. They're going to up the passing work. And I don't think OBJ is going to stay healthy. You know, Bateman it looked good when he was healthy, but didn't last long. So I'm going to take Zay Flowers here and see things back. Solid pick. Solid pick. So after I took Flowers, Anthony Richardson goes off the board, Khalil Herbert, Michael Thomas, uh, Elijah Moore. So kind of a little running uh, wide receivers there. I have four running backs. Olave, Lockett, Sutton, and Flowers are my wide receivers. Let's see who's available at tight end now. Dalton Schultz, newly assigned Houston Texan. Shig Okonkwo, the uh, second year running back or tight end for – Tennessee, Dalton Kincaid, everyone's favorite tight end for Buffalo. Boy, I don't love any of those guys. I might just punt and see who's at the end here. So let, let, me, ask, let me ask you about these rookie tight ends, the three yeah. in particular. Um, Kincaid, obviously, Greg Dolich, and Sam Laporta. <clears throat> so Dolich I actually like because he showed out in the games last year, and Sean Payton already came out and said he wants to like, play him in a certain role. He called it the Joker role. So Dulcich is a guy I am looking at. Uh, hopefully you guys don't hear that <laughs> too much. Uh, at least you, Alan. Dulcich is a guy I'm looking at late for sure. But oh, no, I, I have no faith in Kincaid and um, no faith in um, the other rookies. Oh, oh, oh. Nothing on Laporta? No. Every, everything, everything you're hearing, nothing but good things out of him and George Kittle. It's like that guy's looking for places to go to talk about Sam Laporta. Like, David's going here with McKinnon. Uh, yeah, definitely showed out a few games. I, I think he's your number one running back out there in Kansas City. He's one of the PPR guy. I mean, he's a PPR guy for sure. He can catch out of the backfield, and you know, he, he's out there on first down, but he'll also come back out there on third down and whatnot. Yeah, he's not bad. Not a bad player at all. It's got, it's got nothing to do necessarily with the player. Historically, rookie tight ends just do not produce. So I, I can't go with Laporta here. That's just... <laughs> Might be, you know, unnecessary bias, but it is what it is. What I'm going to do here is take a guy who may or may not finish well, um, but he's a guy who I liked a lot last year with his rushing ability for New England. Maybe he's better than Devin Singletary. Maybe he's not. Maybe Josh Allen sees a lot of touchdowns here. I'm going to take Damian Harris and uh, hope that maybe Josh Allen runs a little less this year and they use Damian Harris uh, more in the red zone. Damn it. Uh, after I take Harris here in the 10th round, we have Jameson Williams go right after me. Uh, Alan Lazard, 10.05, Dalton Schultz, Kirk Cousins, and then Aaron Rodgers uh, right before Rapid Dave picks again. Yeah, these stupid Autobots are like taking two QBs. Anyways, I was going to take Alan Lazard there. 
I figured, you know, why not? You know, I need a receiver on the bench. You know, Rogers drug his ass from Green Bay all the way over to New Jersey. So whatever. But anyhow, I don't want another running back. I'm certainly not taking someone that's on Miami. I mean, what in the hell would you be thinking to take in Devon there? Uh, I don't need Daniel Jones, a uh, Conquo. No, I'm going. Uh, I mean, Elijah Mitchell's not a terrible pick. It'd be more for someone who uh, is a CMC holder, card carrying holder. I'm going to Dell Beckham. I need a receiver to balance out a little bit. You got Jerry McKinnon right there. You got Jacoby Myers, which isn't a bad selection. Like I'm actually between Odell Beckham and Jacoby Myers. I'm assuming since they paid Odell like 20 mil, he's going to have to catch a ball or two. Unfortunately, that'll be all he'll catch before he gets hurt. So absolutely. Yep. <laughs> I'll be on the waiver wire right looking here. for a backup. I mean, you know, it, you got to take your swings late here. In the 10th round, a guy who could easily, if he's healthy, it's OBJ. Like, you know, he could easily lead this uh, wide receiver group and catches and touchdowns and all that stuff. So if I was being more prudent the there, is, uh, yeah. if I was going to be more prudent there, I would have taken Jacoby Myers. Uh, just saying, no. you know, and if I wanted to back up, uh, seriously, if I'm looking at, I don't hold two QBs ever, but if I'm looking for a backup QB, you know, Let's be honest, Jared Goff's like right there. So after Rapid Dave takes OBJ, we have Jared McKinnon and Devon A. Chain go. We've got Allen on the clock here still with no onesie position. So I'm fascinated to see what happens here. Uh we're we're going we're going golf here. Uh, okay. He's he won't be here when it comes back around, you know. Um I, I need a quarterback, and that's the quarterback I want. I mean, maybe uh, there's like four quarterbacks ahead of him, but you know, maybe. The thing about golf, obviously, you're not going to get any type of rushing production, meaningful rushing production. But here we are in the tenth, at the very bottom of the tenth round, and a guy who could easily be top what five, seven in passing yards, passing touchdowns. Ten, yeah. top ten for sure, maybe. He was maybe. top ten last year. I look for him to have a better year this year. I honestly think you're going to see more second half of the season Jared Goff than you did you know in, in the first half not that he wasn't bad in the, he was good in the first half but he just he was on a different level in the second half of the season and I just I just look for that the kind of carryover for sure. I have a question. Yes, were y'all behind more in the second half of the season than you were in the first half no we uh we won a lot of games in the second half of the season well no, I didn't say wins or losses I asked if you no. were behind if he had to do the no. Dak Prescott move no, or something no, you know no I mean? it was not no we were up a lot in those games so up a lot. and you and That's you mentioned you mentioned cousins earlier. If you had your choice of cousins or golf there, you would have gone probably towards golf just because I don't know what's going on in Minnesota. Uh um, just because you don't want the Lions fans to hear you. It, it no, it's I, I, I'm going golf. It's true. I just I just don't like what's <laughs> going on in Minnesota. You got a lot of players that are leaving, a lot of players that are unhappy. They're yeah straight up cutting players. I, I don't care what you think. Madison is not Dalvin cook, right? You're not going to get Dalvin cook type production, which is going to do nothing but put more pressure on Kirk cousins. Um, I just, I, I, I think Minnesota can have a down year this year. I really do. Uh, which could also mean, yeah, you you can have a lot of garbage time in there, but you can also have a lot of picks. So, and picks aren't fun. Um, next, I, I, I don't know where to go next. Like shocking. I, I, I don't, I don't like any of the guys here. That's just, that's just all there is to it. Like running back wise, there's, there's no one I'm really excited about here. Uh, which is something I need to take. Cause I've, I've only got three, I got three running backs. So I need to be taking a running back to Elijah Mitchell's only worth anything. If CMC gets hurt. And this is the thing. I know it's painful. I know we're pretty late here in the podcast here, but you everyone wants to get so excited about their fantasy drafts every year and who they're going to take first and second, but you get this deep and you need to have an idea of who you want to take. And yeah. I'm not saying you do, but I'm just saying that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got a lot of guys here that aren't on teams that once depending on what team they get on, they could do something. Like Kareem Hunt still not on a team. Zeke just sitting there. Leonard Fournette's not on a team. Zeke's still sitting there. You know, I, I don't like Zeke as a as a lead back, but if you put him in the right situation, you can get some really good production out of him. I I'm actually think I'm kind of leaning towards 
I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take Tyler Algier. Um, take your handcuff. Yep. What's that? I'm surprised you didn't take your handcuff at that point. <sighs> Lazar Mitchell sitting right there. He is. You already got like 30 effing running backs. So why not take? I would. No, no, I have three running. It, I, have, oh, I have five running backs. I don't even know. It's so I'm funny, here. Alan. Aside from your top two running backs, all the other three of your running backs are the lower selection on their team. But I swear they could easily finish with the more rushing touchdowns under Connor Parts. It's kind of funny the value you're getting there with the running backs. And, and you just don't know what you're going to get. I mean, yes, you you're expecting everything out of Bijan, but there's not a lot of rookies that just come in and completely dominate. So yep. we'll see. <sighs> yes, sir, RD. You got your onesies taken care of. You're trying to fill your bench here, and you're just swinging for the fences. Yeah, I was gonna. I was looking at Deontay Foreman. He's starting running back out of Chicago. You're catching yep. him right now in the eleventh round. Um, but you know what? Eh, what are we doing here? Let's get it. Hey, there it is. <laughs> I feel like a, I feel like a trader because I got my money McPherson jersey on. I went and put it on. I go kickers for life, baby. Kickers for life. But uh, nah, it, Justin Tucker is for life for me. So here we are in the eleventh round, and Artie is locking up the number one guaranteed kicker every week. I mean, the Ravens just kick field goals like no one else in the league, and Tucker is automatic. So that's a nice little selection there. Early advantage in the eleventh round. Yeah, he's an overrated hack. He Whatever. goes to the twelfth anyway, so I just took him one round early. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't take. That's not even a stretch at this point. He might not be there when it comes back around to you, and you want yeah, your guy. So you, yeah. you take your guy. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, so I'm sitting here. I've got plenty of running backs, plenty of wide receivers. I've got you know the boom and Olave and hopefully Flowers and Lockett and Sutton. Plenty of running backs. I don't need another running back. I shouldn't take another running back. I'm, I, to be honest, now that I'm looking at it, I you wish I'd not take back. <laughs> Can I get one more running back? I wish I'd not taken uh, Damian Harris, and I wish I'd taken Devin Singletary now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. I think you're in prime position. I think you're you're glossing over the, the setup that you have and how it looks. I, I think that you're right now, it, he's the number third ranked guy that's on the list. It's your boy. That you you you're talking late round action with you got him you had him highlighted there for a second. It's yeah. Greg Dolphins. I, I for me at this point on the eleventh late eleventh round, that's a deal. And the thing is too, you got to look at who's ahead of you. And team eleven does not have a tight end yet. If I don't take him here, he can easily get selected. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's uh, going to get picked. Yeah, he, he'll be picked by the time he comes back around. Go ahead and take Dolphins here. Lock that up as a guy who had a good rookie season. Dulcich has been talking him up, so hopefully I've got something here in the 11th round in Dulcich. And now I can just go ahead and take the guy who I think is best on the clock. Um, I do think I'm sure here at wide receiver, but there's no one inspiring me at the position, and there's one guy left at the running back position who I think could have an impact. That's Devin Singletary. Uh, you know, Damian Pierce had an okay year last year. But if you're talking about a guy who was brought in on a free agent contract who may be better in pass protection, uh, certainly showed out for the Bills last year, which is the reason why James Cook did not make the field as much as he could have. I'm going to go ahead, take another running back here. Good pick. Good pick. So this is I'm going to take him. Uh, RD's guy, Foreman, goes off the board, and then Elliott goes off the board, so no chance for Allen there. Rishi Rice. A guy who I know a lot of people are talking about being their last pick, you know, potentially making noise there at Kansas City. Mooney, Tyler Boyd goes off, and now we're back here after a kick selection. Oh boy, dog's back. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Ray, Ray Rice is a, a kid I've watched play high school uh, football. He, he's he's a local boy where I'm from. Okay, so he stayed right in town there in SMU. Yep. Yep. Gosh. He's from. He played for uh, Richland. Out here in North Richland Hills, Texas. Well, already now that you've taken your kicker, are there any defenses sticking out to you, or is there another bench player you'd like to add? Yeah, there won't be any defense until like the, like right now. Um, I think with most uh, most of the time when I actually do pick a defense, there's none that stick out far and, uh, and ahead where I'm like willing to take them here. You know, at some point I think it was who was it? Alan was it the Colts or the the Patriots or whatever? They were scoring like 22 points a week or something like that. Where 
people went and went after him. They went after him early and hot. And I was like, hey, get it while you can. But as far as a few years ago when, I mean, it was basically Zach Wilson, Tua, and Mac, Mac Jones were your starting quarterbacks, and they were very young. It was a good idea to get that Patriots defense with all those young, vulnerable quarterbacks in the division. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, right now, if you look at the the defensive positions, you have the 49ers, uh, ADP of a 215. They projected to score 105 points. Eagles, 96. Jets, 95. Cowboys, 98. You know what? I mean, you know what? We're, we're here. We're here. It's just fun. There you have RD taking the 49ers defense in the 12th round. And I will say, this is one thing I don't want to take too much time on, but when you're looking at defenses late, it's a good idea to look at the schedule I did that the other night. Two defenses I kind of like. Um, oh, shit, I already forgot the other one. But the Atlanta Falcons are playing <laughs> – the Atlanta Falcons are playing Carolina at home week one against a rookie in Bryce Young and Green Bay at home uh, week two against, you know, a Jordan Love who has only started a few games so far. So the Atlanta Falcons, obviously not a hot name at defense, but if you're looking to get off to a good start in your first two weeks with streaming defense, you could do worse than against two young quarterbacks at home. That's generally like what we do, to be honest yep. with you. We, yep. we look at that and then because we know we're going to stream the whole season. You know, you, you're not going to be locked in for the whole season with one freaking DST. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So, yeah, you'll look at week one, possibly week two, and see if that's something you can hold on to. But, yeah, if there's a stud defense out there, like I said, you know, people are going bonkers over the Patriots defense. They were scoring 20, 25 points a week, and that's a difference maker. And the Niners here, I mean, you got Bosa, you've got all those guys, and they just added our boy uh, Hargrave, so look out for them. Yep, and if you're in a division that's terrible, but you're like the standout defensive portion of that, you know you're going to have six easy games. Yeah, I mean, Cardinals without Murray, so who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, Alan, what's on your mind? Um, I, I, so, so you're at the point in the draft where, like, especially if you're looking at, like, ADP, you just got a bunch of guys there that I don't really care for. I'm, I'm looking at a wide receiver here. Is Jameson um, Williams off the board yet? Yeah, yeah. He went off the board a couple rounds ago. Oh, okay. So you made us look bad. Uh, going off. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm looking at wide receiver, and the guys that are here, I'm, I, Rondell Moore, I don't like. Zay Jones, no. Romeo Dobbs, no. Michael Gallup, I actually think he'll have a better year this season coming off of last year's that first year off of that knee injury. But I, I still not a big fan. I'm here. I'm trying to just look for someone who might do something, might kind of shock, a little shock and awe type thing, uh, come out of nowhere. And for me, it, I, I'm going to scroll down a little ways. Um, this guy's got an ADP of 195.4, uh, Isaiah Hodgkins. He could be that number one guy out there in New York. Uh, when he got traded over to the Giants, he actually played pretty good last year. Um, Average just under a touchdown a game while he was in there. Mm -hmm. He's one of those where he was he was with Buffalo, didn't have the opportunity, got traded to the Giants, went to a team where he had opportunity, and got showed some production. So, no, as an Eagles fan, he was very annoying last year to have how consistent he was. I mean, he kept scoring touchdowns, and he was Daniel Jones' number one guy when he was in there. Yep. So. And then and now I, I, I got to take a tight end. Um, and, and I'm going to take my guy, Sam Laporta, hearing a lot of really great things about him. And especially with Jamison Williams out the first six weeks, they're looking for him to really play a big part of that offense the first six weeks, especially. Now, RD and I were talking about how many homer picks you were going to make. And I just got to say, I mean, you've got a number of guys here that are interesting Michael Mayer, if you wanted to go another rookie, Juwan Johnson, Tyler Higby, as far as proven vets. But you went Laporta, and I'll be damned if I don't respect you for it. It's I, I you don't so with the Rams with Higby, it, is Stafford really actually healthy? And then you got all the reports that they were doing everything they could to try and trade him. Like the only other guy I was considering here was Juwan jo Johnson. Um, I, I I actually like Johnson a lot. But I think you're going to see a lot more of Taysom Hill in, in that tight end slot this year, um, doing a little bit more. Uh, Mayor, I don't know who's playing quarterback there. I mean, just who knows? And I think Dawson Knox days are numbered there in in Buffalo with Dalton Kincaid. Okay, so you're just gonna take the chance, you know? Have the nice little. At least I have a lion on my team, another lion, and see how it goes. 
let's take the kid. I'm, I'm hearing oh. a lot of good things. So oh. let's see. Let's see it. RD, we're getting there, man. We're right toward the end here. What's on your mind? I just got to start filling in some extra holes here. So we're going Zay Jones at 149 uh, rank, uh, 149 ADP. Put a receiver in there. I've got four receivers, four running backs, a tight end, a flex, a kicker, a defense. My whole team is set right now at this point. So here you are with Zay Jones. I mean, a guy who was the kind of guy last year when I played someone to get who had Zay Jones, I was like, oh, fuck, is he going to score two touchdowns this year or, you know, this week or what? So. Yeah, score more it, it doesn't work out with Ridley. Else. Exactly. Um, and then right after him, you've got Tank Bigsby, who is not only a good handcuff for ETN, but if ETN gets hurt, which he has in the past, Bigsby's a guy who a lot of people like, and they drafted him in the third round. So a guy I think is good value in the 13th. Romeo Dobbs, Jalen Warren, Kyler Murray all the way down here at 13.8. And boy, if he's healthy early, that's a steal in the 13th round. And then the rookie, Roshan Johnson. Funny, I mean, they doubled up on Bears there. Uh, team nine did here I am. I basically still have my kicker and defense for the last two rounds. So I can take my last bench player here and I'm just going to go for someone who I think has a chance to just absolutely, um, tear it up for the team. And this is actually a guy I like, and a guy I've taken a few times now had not an explosive season last season, but if you really watch the games, you saw his talent and now he's got a rookie quarterback he's dealing with. who's going to be looking for consistency. The only other guys on the team who could threaten him are Robert Woods, who's toward the end of his career, and John Mechie, who missed all of last season. So I'm going to take Nico Collins here as my very last player and um, hope that he turns into the wide receiver one for this Texas team. And uh, I like that pick actually a lot toward the end here. So what do you guys think of Nico Collins, if you have any thoughts at all? Yeah, he's a late-round pick, man. He's, he's there for uh, in case, break in case of emergency. I mean, do you have any faith in like Robert Woods or did you like John Mechie coming in the last year? I, I, I don't know that I really like anybody with Houston. <laughs> okay. So, um, and again, you've got to, yeah, I'll say it. Ohio State quarterbacks ain't, ain't nothing. So they come to the NFL, NFL with a bag of nothing. And uh, so we'll see. So here we are, here we are at the end. Um, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and not take McPherson because I know it's gonna break RD's heart. Do it. I've already got my kicker. I might double down on kickers, but I'm just saying. You, you, know what? you did take a kicker already, so I'm gonna go ahead and take Money McPherson. There you go. Yeah, fine. All defenses here toward the end here. Carlson and RD, you're back on the board, and you still can fill out your bench if you like. Yeah, filling out the bench. Give me uh, Curtis Samuel. I was going to actually gallop, uh, gallop back click too soon. But, yeah. Um, we're we're back back here to you, Alan, and we are going to see which combination of kicker and defense you like the most. Well, we're going defense here. And I don't have the schedule up, or else I would take a look and see who's playing who week one. So without looking at that and seeing that, I don't so like cool. their – I'm not a big fan of their week one matchup. But I think they're going to be really good this year and give me the Lions defense. Yeah, it's like go full homer, man. Uh, you know, hey. I always say never go full homer because you'll never come back. But you've already gone. What, what in the hell makes you think they're going to be a good defense this year? They're our, not our, good. Our, our number one weak spot last year was our secondary, and we've completely revamped it. They're playing Philly we're week, week one. <laughs> no, we're playing Kansas City week one. It says week one opponent uh, Philly. Is that last that year's? Last year. That was last year. Why does this stupid app not have 2023 up? I don't know. Oh, you're playing Kansas City, you dunk. <laughs> yeah, I, I just said, I Look, I said I don't like their week one matchup. I don't have the schedule up. So, I'm just going with, I'm just picking the dead defense because I think that defense is going to be really good. Right. This year. Right. I'm just that's telling that's you. Like, yeah. All so right. just for everyone, uh, just for everyone watching this, do not draft the Lions uh, as your defense because they are playing Kansas City at the first game of the season. <laughs> or do because we're going to shock the world. Yeah, your okay. Choice. <laughs> your choice. <laughs> you're not shutting them out, so you're not going to shock the world. Be, if it anything, it's fifty to fifty-one. <laughs> you're negative. You're negative ten. <laughs> well, we're a couple of defensive touchdowns there. You never yeah, know. Right. A couple of defensive. Pat, Pat Mahomes ne is never at his best week one. I'm just this saying. is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. We're going to score. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Oh god, <laughs> you're dumb. Uh, you're as far idiot. as Kicker, I gotta take a kicker, right? Uh, yes. Let me take a, a team that's gonna 
score oh, points and get, get near there. He's going I'm, over again. <laughs> no, because I don't. You know what? I'm not drafting Lions kicker because I don't know who it's going to be yet. Um, we've, got three, we've got three kickers that we've brought in, and it could be either any one of them. Why don't but, you go ahead and tell us where they all went to high school yeah. and the backgrounds were? I, 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 can't tell you. I recorded a whole podcast on the kicker situation in Detroit. So, yeah, so, I'll be sure to listen to that. Go, go, go check out Southern <laughs> Lions with Alan. But I, this is a slight, slight homer pick because I'm taking Jake Moody, who oh. played his college ball at Michigan, but he's oh, a kicker nice. for he's a kicker for the 49ers, Jesus right? Christ. He's going to score a ton of points in San Francisco. That's all there is to it. That's you know. Hey, you got to score points, right? Uh, I don't like Osborne. Give me, um, yeah, give me Gallup. I'll finish off with Gallup. Okay. I mean, for filling out your bench to make it Zay Jones, Curtis Samuel, and Michael Gallup, you could do a lot worse. Um, I just want to recap our teams real quick. That's obviously not important which defense I go with. Um, Get those I, do, I would take the Saints because I read they had a good, I just saw by chance they had a good start to the season and they were pretty good last season. So I would take good the Saints. Uh, they're NFC South, right? So yeah, it's that's a soft schedule. Yeah, that's a good point too. Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, so just to recap, because I'm going to post this all and have everyone vote on who has the best team, so we're going to do that whole thing. Um, Alan, would you like to recap your team really quick? Uh, yeah. So uh, QB one, we got Jared Goff starting at running back. We got CMC and Ramondre Stevenson. Wide you receiver. Lost everyone, when you said Goff. What's that? You lost everyone when you said Goff. <laughs> 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 Wide right. receiver, we got T. Higgins and Calvin Ridley, tight end Sam Laporta. Right now in the flex, we got Drake London, kicker Jake Moody, Lions defense, and rounding out our bench, we got Mike Evans, David Montgomery, Jamal Williams, Quentin Johnson, Tyler Algier, and Isaiah Hodgkins. I'm not a big um I'm not big on Johnson at all. I didn't like him coming out of TCU, but otherwise I think I mean having Mike Evans and David Montgomery on your bench, that's pretty fantastic. Yeah. And Week one, that's probably not good. It's not going to be who's on the bench. Like, let's right. just be, you know, there's going to be Drake. Drake London's not starting in my flex when I got David Montgomery on my team. Yeah, that's just all. All right, Artie, what's your team looking like? Uh, starting QB, we got Justin Herbert. Running backs: Najee Harris, Najee Harris, and James Conner. Uh, wide receivers: Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle. Tight end position: Darren Waller. Flex: Christian Kirk. I got Justin Tucker for my kicker. San Francisco 49ers is my defense. And then on the bench, we got Brian Robinson, Rashad Penny, Odell Beckham, Zay Jones, and Curtis Samuel. And I am coming in with Tua as my quarterback, Greg Dulcich as my tight end. My running back room is Derek Henry, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Alexander Madison, Damian Harris, and Devin Singletary. My wide receivers are Chris Olave, Tyler Lockett, Corlin Sutton, Zay Flowers, and Nico Collins. And, of course, this will all be posted later for everyone to vote on. Um, guys, real quick, I know, R.D., you got to get, get out of here. Are there any regrets, anything you wish you'd done otherwise that we look back? I only had that one. I, you know, I talked about how I, I wish I would have not got Waller in that certain area. I should have uh, went a different route because I could have got Ingram shortly after. Um, you know, towards the end, I think it filled out nicely. You, you know, when you run into this rut in, like, the 8th, ninth, or 10th round, you know, you run into a bunch of guys, you're like, I don't know if I want them. And it's the same with any draft, right? You're excited about your first five picks for the yep. most part, right? Six oh, yeah. is, is pushing it. And then late round, you start kind of thinking about who you want to pick up in roster, stash, hold, or handcuff. And, you know, it, 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 you got to play, like Alan and I say all the time, know who you're drafting with. If you're in a league that you know these guys, you can almost anticipate their moves. And if you got a guy that you want, you can go get them. You yep. have to go get him because, you know, it's not going to be there when he comes back around the corner. Right. And, you know, know who you're drafting with. Do some mock drafts because you never know what's going to happen, especially like this. It's only three of us out of 12 teams. And even these other nine teams threw us for a loop a little bit every so often. And, you know, research, checking stuff out, it it, it, it can't hurt. So do some mock drafts, check them out. And, um, but yeah, also talk to your friends. Hey, what do you think about this or that? You know what I mean? Alan, closing thoughts and regrets. Uh, I, I I regret nothing. Uh, Your whole team is a regret. <laughs> I, I I talked about how at the beginning I, I wasn't really excited about my wide receiver room, but after the, the next several picks, I I feel a lot better about it. Um, it's just it, it, here's the biggest thing: don't go in there with a hundred percent set plan. You've got to be fluid. You got to be able to roll with the punches. Um, 
and like Rapid Dave talked about, know who you're drafting with because that's how you can know. Like there's a couple times where you know you're sitting there and you're looking, and like I talked about with Rapid Dave when he drafted Herbert. Yeah, he kind of knew he had to take him there because he wouldn't have been there when he came back because I would have taken him. So if that's the guy that he really wanted, and don't be don't be afraid to reach. You know, look yeah. at look at the guys. You Within know, reason. look at your board. You know, trust your board. And if you got a guy and you're like, yeah, well, it's early if I take him now, but he might not be around when it comes back to me. Take him. Who cares? Take the guys that you want. Who cares what people say? People, you're going to get made fun of during your draft at some point in time. Let it be for let it be for your convictions and what you what you feel. Alan gets made fun of a lot. He's got terrible picks. Damn Lions Damn, fans. I, I win so much. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys joining me. Um, if, if I was to say anything about my roster, I love my running back room. I could give you a million reasons why my wide receiver group could crap out and absolutely just disappoint me this season. So that's just the trade off you get. You know, you love your running backs, you hate your wide receivers. You love your wide receivers, you hate your running backs. So. I like the whole team, but yeah, your team is just rough. (laughs) So rough. It's so rough. Hey, I'd I'd like to thank you so much for having us. You know, every time we come on the show, we're we're able to to hang out with you, have a couple drinks. It one, you never know how long it's going to last, and we have so so much fun, and we appreciate the invite because hanging out and uh, you know, especially doing a mock draft, it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much. No, I just want. I mean, thank you so much. I I told you this is going to be a lot shorter than it ended up being, so you're very gracious with your time. Uh, well, thanks for that. And um, yeah, Alan, Alan, I had Rapid Dave introduce the show. So if you wouldn't mind just finishing up with some plugs and telling us when and where you can find the show, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. So uh, Strike Up Beer Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, everywhere. Uh, and then we've got uh, Ranger Roundup comes out tomorrow. That's Rapid Dave's uh, Ranger, Texas Rangers podcast. We've got uh, Talking Baseball and we've got uh, SB Fantasy or no. SP baseball and SP fantasy football. Uh, those come out Thursdays, Fridays with a couple other days mixed in throughout the week and um, talking lines with Alan. So those are all anywhere you get your podcast. Those are all uh, pretty much uh, audio only. We do have some stuff set up on YouTube for those, but yeah, that's about it. Awesome. And mostly awesome, football awesome. is whenever they feel like going live, right? Like mostly Mondays, but other than that, just whenever you want to do something, right? Yeah, we're, you know, uh, like you already said earlier, we're slackers. <laughs> I didn't put up a post till like three hours before the show. So, yeah, that's what it is. Rookie. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And you guys have a good week. Hey, thank you. Bye, everyone. See you.